Currently standing by, also we have Lot the Old Country's morning meteorologist Josh Marthers. He is standing by with the very latest on Hurricane Dorian. And Josh, we are going to be start feeling the impacts of Hurricane Dorian today. Yeah, uh, they're, they're going to start as early as later this morning, and the first ones we get are going to be the, the rising waters. We, we do expect a very high tide uh, coming in around 1 o'clock this afternoon along the South Carolina coast, which two to three hours in advance of that, the water levels will significantly rise. No major change in track or strength as far as we're concerned this morning. This means our forecast ideas we put together yesterday for direct local impacts are intact. Our hurricane warning in place for the coast tropical storm warning back inland four to seven feet of storm surge potential along the South Carolina coast in a reasonable worst case scenario and you can see we're kind of right in the ground zero here for the highest storm surge on the, along the South Carolina coast into Southeast North Carolina. A storm surge warning is in effect right now with high tide coming in around one o'clock today. Another at about one o'clock tomorrow morning. Both of these will challenge Irma and Matthew tide levels. So we're going to expect at least that type of storm surge along the coastline based off of the latest tide predictions from the National Weather Service office here in Charleston. Inundation to begin as early as late morning in those low lying areas along the coastline and in downtown Charleston out of this. On top of that, you're going to put rain on it, especially tonight and into tomorrow with six to 10 inches of rain expected across the coastal communities, the coastal counties from Georgetown down through Charleston, lower Colleton, Eastern Dorchester, Eastern Berkeley counties. You get just inland from that. It goes to four to six and two to four, a little bit farther inland. Just keep in mind, we may have to move this six to 10 area west, depending on the exact track of the storm. And we'll know more about that through the day today. And we might have to put a new category on here of 10 to 15 closer to the coast. We're not ready to go there just yet, but when I show you what's going on our high resolution computer model, you'll understand why I'm not ruling that out. Scattered to numerous power outages are expected as wind gusts late tonight through or later today through Thursday will be in the 40 to 60 mile per hour range back inland 60 to 80 along the coast and we cannot rule out gusts to 100 miles per hour along and east of Highway 17. This morning we're going to see isolated to widely scattered showers. We already have some of those out there uh, on Storm Team 2 live radar, but as we head toward late afternoon and especially after dark, the rain will begin to pick up along our coastline and the wind will as well. And look at the head Heavy rain that moves in after midnight tonight through tomorrow morning. Tons of rain falling across the low country, and this does not let up through the day until very late in the afternoon. So we're going to have tons of rain falling, and the wind is going to be quite intense tomorrow as well at times, Ariel. And when those two come together, that's why the power outage potential has our attention. Yeah, Josh, and a good reminder that anything you have outside, lawn furniture, decorations, anything like that needs to be moved inside right away, especially before these winds start to pick up. Well, let's go ahead and show you the timeline on those winds. You can see as early as this morning, we're going to see some of those winds really start to ramp up, especially along our coastline. Now, what I want you to notice is as we head into the 2, 3, 4 o'clock hour, those winds are going to start to pick up far inland. We're looking at 15, 20, 30 miles per hour, even for inland areas by this evening. Along our coastline, we're looking at wind gusts from 30 to 40 up to 50 miles per hour. Now, these are just potential. We could see a couple wind gusts higher than this, especially as we head into the overnight hours and into your day on Thursday when the eye of Dorian is going to be at its closest point. You can see winds gusting as high as 40, 50, even 60 as you head into inland areas. Definitely going to be a very windy day for us as that eye moves right along our coastline. Could see wind gusts as high as 70, 80 miles per hour along our coastline. So definitely talking some dangerous conditions. Now, the, the low country never closes those bridges officially. However, anything over 40 miles per hour, you are crossing at your own risk. Now, another threat we're going to be talking through the day today and even into your day tomorrow is that potential for a quick spin up with a tornado or two. We do expect warnings to be issued with this. Of course, we'll keep you updated, but make sure you do have a safe place to go because some of those tornadoes could be a little hard to see with some of that heavier rain coming through 